want to thank Gene for all the work he done. And all the workers, the food, it was great. The membership, it was great. And uh, I played with Scott Odom and uh, Preacher's Daddy and all of our Odom and the Preacher. And there was a choice made.
John 4, the Bible says, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though disciples himself baptized not but his disciples, or though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the partial ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, therefore being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, was about to sit back. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me a drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask us drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jew have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me the drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. And the woman said to him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. The will is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst to him. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up in the everlasting life. It's good to have Brother Miles and Sister Tanner. Brother Miles, would you pray for me today? Ask that you'll just give thank you, Lord, the, the words that you have for us today, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you'll just meet each day, Lord. If there's one here that, that don't know you, Lord, we pray that this is the day that come to know you. Lord, just bless over your service and thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say I appreciate Brother Jack and Christian of course Wednesday night and the great, great message. I was leaving. Charlotte Thursday, and that's a busy place. No matter how many times I've been there, it's just you get on maybe five minutes go, 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 boom, 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 bump, bump. The crazy people, by the way, they? <laughs> I think I fit in with my driving because I'm crazy. But anyway, it's just, you know, they, 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 it says that the speed limit is 65, but I mean, you get up to 80 and they still pass you. It's just dangerous. And anyways, I had downloaded this new app on my phone. Somebody told me about it. It's, it's a GPS type thing. It's called Waze. W-A-Z-E. And this thing, it does. All, it, it, it tells you if there's a car a mile up the road on the shoulder, it tells you. It says the car's up here on the, on the shoulder. It even tells you the mall's sitting there. <laughs> if you got a new AD, it was good to know where the police was in. But I still obeyed the laws, Brother Larry. I obeyed the laws. It tells you where restaurants are. It tells you where gas stations are. I mean, if you're hungry, it tells you where... To... But anyways, it lets you know if there's construction going on. It lets you know if there's a... If there's a... Been an accident, it lets you know if there's a traffic jam. And anyways, it was saying that there's some construction ahead. But I... To be honest with you, I didn't want to detour. I didn't want to get off because I didn't want to get on 77. I didn't want to go long parade around. And anyways, I was heading down to the city and they were working on water. And I don't know what you call water line or something had burst. And Sister Pat said water was shooting up. I, I'm not a good judge of distance or anything, but like 200 feet or so. I mean, that water was just shooting way up there. And I thought, man, that's a spring of water. God began to deal with my heart. In John chapter number 4, there's a woman sitting out or coming to a well. There's a woman that's Well, 
Friends, what God had given them and my last service, or my, my message was the last one on Friday night. I've been there several services throughout the week and they had preached on the whole Bible. I mean, I thought, I mean, it's, it's just a little preacher humor, but I thought they've not left me anything to preach. And, uh, you know, what is there left to preach? And I was joking with them. Brother Jim, I was sitting there and I said, oh, you all have left me as the maps. And uh, I was going to preach out of John chapter number four. And Andy, I, I was going to preach on her pacifier or satisfied. But I got over there and just joking about the maps and I realized how far the Lord went out of His way for that woman that was coming the way. And, and God gave me a thought, you know, how many has the Lord went out of His way to meet your need? Amen. How often have you been discouraged? How
acres. You ought to have a well of living water springing up. Same person, mamas and daddies, menos and papas, brothers and sisters, listen to You ought to have a spring of living water. Why, why ain't your water streaming in? Like that water that was coming out the ground there in, in, in uh, uh, Charlotte that was going up so many feet. I mean, what? Should, shouldn't our soul be like that this morning? I mean, listen. When, when I got saved, or when you got saved, it was. Somebody told me one time, said, when Brother Nathan got saved, he wasn't an anointed Christian. He was an annoying Christian. <laughs> I mean, I like people to be so excited about being saved that they get on your nerves. I mean, I, I don't even know how the brother found him, but one, one guy got saved on Tuesday. He called Brother Richard at 11 o'clock, and he said, Preacher, I just ain't got on being saved. He said, I need to find out what hotel Preacher Nathan's in. He said, maybe I shouldn't give that to you. He said, I want to find out what the hotel is. He said, he's in the comfort inn over there on the New Hope Road. By the way, I like that road name, New Hope. And he come one o'clock in the morning, telephone rings in the hotel. It scared me to death. I didn't know if there's a fire alarm going. I wasn't sure what was going on. I mean, you know when you're you just frazzled and, and, and I, I woke up knocking stuff off the table and all that stuff. Didn't know if it's down or what. I thought I was home. I wasn't sure what was going on. And uh, I, I said, hello, hello, that's uh, uh, Nathan Jennings room. And he said, Woo! Preacher Nathan, is this you? <laughs> I said, that's good, buddy. And I said, are you happy? He said, listen. He said, last Friday night about this time, he said, I was at the bar. This time last Friday night, he said, I was living for the devil. He said, but right now, he said, I'm saved and I'm happy. Do you know what was in him? And listen, or also there was a well. There was a spring of living water. And he was excited about being saved. And I told him on Wednesday when I got back to the church, I said, Because I'm telling you, we've all been around Christians that have lost their excitement. We need to get back. Could you imagine this morning if we all acted like we just got saved? It'd be different. That mean God, He put a spring inside of us. He put, not, not, not for it to be stagnant, not for it to be dried up, not for it to be uh, just a trickle, but He wants a spring of living water we let the world get in our way. We let bitterness and hate and strife and envy and jealousy get in our way. We let stress and sickness and worry and the, and the problems and everything that we have to endure in life, we can let that get in our way and stop it up to where it can't spring up like God wants it to be. When I was studied over this message a couple of days ago. I thought about that story. I preached it before, Sister Jesus, this story. I'd heard it from Brother Ralph Sexton Jr. We were sitting in a... Uh, Brother Greg and I was eating lunch with him. Some of the preachers from our area a couple, two years ago, I believe, before the first tent went out. He talked about that keeper of the spring. And the story goes that there's this, this man that has been hired and his title was a keeper of the spring. What he did was he made sure that the reservoir was cleaned out, that the that the, the water wheel, you know, was a turning and everything, that the water was clear, fresh and flowing and everything. And the, the old mayor had retired and a, a, a new young mayor had been voted in and they had the first city meeting or whatever and they was doing the budget. And he said, you know, I've been going through this and trying to make out the budget for this next year and find out where we put all the money and who we give it to and all that stuff. And said, but I found something. Who, who, what is this keeper of the well? What is this keeper of the spring? He said, oh, that's a guy who lives up in the mountains. He said, a lot of people really don't know him. He said, he lives up in the mountains, kind of a hermit. He said, but he, he, keep, he keeps the springs clean. In the fall, they make sure he gets the leaves out throughout the fall and winter as the fall. Said sometimes, uh, 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 said there might be an animal die, getting the roots 
said, it takes that out. Said it again. They said, boy, we, we don't need it. Said, somebody just go up there to his mountain home and tell him that we appreciate him and all the, that he's done, but we just don't need him. And they done that. They went and gave him his pink slip and said, the keeper of the spring wasn't needed no more. Well, time went by. Little by little, little babies started getting sick. Then little kids started getting sick. Then some adults started getting sick. And what they've been doing is they've been getting that water. That water supply comes from the spring. They've been, it been polluted. And they was getting sick from drinking that water. And so they couldn't find out what was going on. And they started taking folks to the doctor. And the doctor said, listen, said some, somehow our people are getting polluted from the water. Said, what are we going to do about it? And they started going up in the woods and looking at the spring and everything. Man, there's leaves in there. There's trash in there. There was two dead deer carcass in there. And all of that was getting into the water that was polluting the water. They came back. They brought a report. Said, oh, the, the spring. Said, it's clogged up. It's all filthy. It's all nasty to see. They said, man, what are we going to do? Now, one guy recommended said that somebody needs to go talk to the keeper of the spring. Tell him we're sorry. We apologize. We do the need. So they went back up there and they said, listen, we realize we made a mistake. We realize how important your job was. We realize that without you, our springs will get nasty. Our springs won't flow. Our spring, our water supply won't be what it's supposed to be. And, and they got into work and he cleaned up the spring and guess what everything was fine listen God himself when you got born again he put a spring inside of you he put a well inside of you and sometimes we can let the things of this life get on the inside and affect that spring and affect that well where we can't operate like we should where we're not as clean as we should be where we're not bubbling over like we should be while we don't have our joy and our happiness and satisfaction. Why it seems like we're down and out. Why it seems like we got the pooch mouth. Why it seems like I'm telling you, it's time that we go get the water that's put a well on the inside of us. It's time that we go to Jesus and ask Him to help us. It's time that we go to the one that can give the life-giving water. It's time to go to the one that's gone the well and put a well inside of you. It's time to go get the keeper of your well. And ask him. With every head bowed in the eye, if you've been saved, there ought to be a spring in you. How many believe that? There ought to be a spring in you. There ought to be a well in you. Is there something in your way? Is there something keeping you from flowing? Is there something keeping you from bubbling over? Maybe, listen, if you've never been saved, you don't know the joy that, that you can have as a Christian. If you've never been saved, you don't listen, you've never really been happy until you get saved. You've never really experienced true joy, true peace, and true satisfaction until you get saved. <laughs> Maybe you've been saved, but your heart's not where it needs to be with God. Maybe you let something pollute your way, and, 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 and you're not happy this morning. Listen, make things right with Jesus. Maybe this morning you're going through so many storms and so many things, you got worry and strife and, and stress and stuff just clogging up your way. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Let go and let God. So that your spring can flow. So that your well can come up with water everlasting. Would there be anyone say, Preacher, I've never been saved and I don't know Jesus? As my Lord Savior, would you raise your hand if you've never been saved? Would you raise your hand? Would there be anyone say, Preacher, I'm not where I need to be with the Master? I've been saved and I'm not where I need to thank you. Bless your heart, anyone else? Not where you need to be. Not where you need to be with the Lord. Anyone else? Would there be anyone saying, Preacher, I got some stuff in my life. I'm just got some stuff going on, got some situations, got some worry, got some stress, got I just I, you just got some stuff. Call 
blocking up your way. Bless your heart. 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 All, all over the house, listen. I'm going to pray and I invite you to come. Just bring it to Jesus. Let it clean out your will. Maybe you came here stressed out. Maybe you came here lost. Maybe you came here without joy. Maybe you came here and you say, I, 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 I. maybe you're just going through the motions. We all get that. We all just go to where we're just going through life. But listen, Jesus came that we might have life and life more abundant. He don't want you just to have life. He, and He don't want you just to have a button. He wants you to be more abundant. Amen. I invite you to come. Let it, let it clean out your will. And maybe throughout the rest of the day you can be flowing. Amen. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Father, for our time together. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to hearts. Lord, my prayer is that, that whoever raised their hand, Lord, maybe even folk who didn't raise their hand, but they just hide me up, Lord. They're just down and out. They just lost their joy. Maybe someone needs to be saved. Maybe someone needs to rededicate their life. Maybe someone just needs to come give them joy. I invite them to come. We'll praise you, Lord, for what you do for them. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand 483. If you need to come, you come. Brother Tash here, I'm here. We will pray for you and be happy to talk to you.
He wants us to have this win in the praise of God. Amen. I hope you got joy.